Soul Patch 2.01 for Cyberpunk 2077 and Phantom Liberty is being rolled out now guys across PC, PlayStation and Xbox platforms. Today we get into all the details the patch notes offer. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ and if you do enjoy the video, leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. Okay, so let's just get straight into it people and see what has been sorted. Phantom Liberty specific Bowls to the wall When talking to Paco Repeating the blue dialogue option From the corporal life path Will no longer block progress Dog eat dog Fixed an issue where it was possible to earn Multiple relic points By triggering the first meeting With Songbird more than once Cool I did not know about that Firestarter Fixed an issue that uh, could cause V to get stuck in the wall or roof after performing a finisher on Kurt Hansen. Okay, so moving heat. Fixed an issue that could cause all traffic to disappear after completing the quest. I know this has been a problem for many people. Fixed an issue where triggering combat in the garage in specific scenarios could cause various disruptions to quest flow. New person, same old mistakes. Fix an issue where the gate to Bill's hot dog stand was closed. Okay, so somewhat damaged. Fix an issue preventing the player from scanning their neural network system. Various fixes for devices in the bunker. The killing moon. Fix an issue that caused the doors leading to the shutter to not open. Okay, so you know my name. Fix an issue where V could remain connected to the sniper nest. Blocking quest progress after repeatedly switching cameras at the end of the sequence. Reed will now wear his party outfit during the dialogue with Songbird. Addressed an issue where some phone calls necessary to continue the main story began with a delay. Various fixes for animations, lighting scenes, VFX and more. Performance improvements for both PC and consoles, especially in the Dogtown area. I have noticed guys it was getting a bit jerky and laggy, I'm not going to lie. Okay, so quests and open world. Automatic love. The disruption effect caused by talking to Johnny and selecting a specific dialogue option at the end of the quest will no longer persist on screen. Ghost Town fixed an issue where the quest could get stuck on the defeat Nash and his people objective if the game was saved during combat prior to update 2.0. Gig breaking news fixed an issue where Ted Fox's car didn't spawn. Fixed an issue where the gig wouldn't trigger after approaching the quest area. Gig going away party fixed an issue where it wasn't possible to get in the car uh, with Flavio because it spawned on the ground. Gig. The Lord giveth and taketh away. Fixed an issue where the Militech SUV spawned underground. Killing in the name. Fixed an issue where leaving the quest unfinished could block clues scanning, preventing the player from progressing in many quests. Fixed an issue where the Bart Mars Collective website wasn't visible in some cases. Playing for time. Fixed an issue where healing and radio icons disappeared from the hood after the car chase with Takamura. Space Oddity fixed an issue where the quest didn't activate if the location was approached prior to update 2.0. I'm sure Space Odyssey is that famous, uh, is it not the one with the painting? I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was. Okay, so we're going to move on to the heist now. Fixed an issue where Jackie was in prison in front of the afterlife. Fixed an issue where when riding the elevator to the 42nd floor uh, with the low FPS, V could fall through the floor and die. Jeez. Okay, the Soda Prophet song. Fixed an issue where completing a quest could cause the police system to turn a blind eye to V's crimes. Wow, sounds cool. The Ripper Duck. Uh, fixed an issue where if the player got into the driver's seat from the passenger seat, Jackie would turn to the noodle stand and refuse to drive to the Ripper Duck. Wow. Fixed an issue where NCPD scanner hustles could remain uncompleted even after looting the necessary containers. Fixed an issue where some iconic weapons wouldn't appear on the wall of the stash in V's apartment. Great. Uh, lowered the value of the tribute check required to enter the area where the thermal katana can be looted. Okay, so on to gameplay. Made it possible to properly switch through armed cyberware by cycling through weapons. Great change. Addressed an issue that could cause V to become invulnerable to all damage. A wrecked NCPD cruiser without wheels won't be patrolling the streets of Night City anymore. 
fix an issue where some obsolete mods in the inventory and stash weren't properly exchanged for new weapon mods. Fix an issue where weapons obtained pre-update 2.0 could have a TLS too high when compared to a player's level. Remove various obsolete crafting specs. Disassembling a budget arm slot automatic will now give one crafting component. Okay, so now on to PC specific. Fix an issue where the UI could show controller inputs when playing on the keyboard and mouse. Players were unable to get achievements due to an issue that prevented Phantom Liberty achievements from unlocking on PC before a backend fix implemented on the day of the release will have them retroactively unlocked on GOG and Steam after loading a save from that playthrough. For the Epic Games Store, the issue is still under investigation. Fixed an issue where, after installing update 2.0 but not the expansion on GOG, a pop-up saying Phantom Liberty downloaded, please return to the main menu to access new content could appear in the in-game menu. Improved image quality of the LSS, ray reconstruction in the ultra performance settings. Okay, so on to console specific now. Address the issue of corrupted saves on PlayStation by increasing the maximum save file size limit. Note, this will not fix saves corrupted before the update. Fixed an issue where launching the game without an internet connection would prompt the player to log into GOG My Rewards again. Okay, so miscellaneous. Various crash fixes on PC and consoles. Vehicle radio volume has been adjusted so it's no longer too quiet compared to other sounds in the game. If you turn down the volume of other sounds in order to better hear the radio, you may want to readjust the volume before continue playing. Added sounds for the basilisk that were missing. Fix an issue where the player could earn an infinite score in trauma drama by shooting at enemies dropping from a helicopter repeatedly. Man, I uploaded a video on that as well. I think I actually was the one to upload that video, so that's probably where they've seen this. Growl FM and Dark Star websites will now be visible when playing without Phantom Liberty. Fix an issue where disconnecting the internet didn't result in an error message being displayed in my rewards and cross progression tabs. The song History by Gezi or Twins, does that say? And Trash Generation will will now be disabled when the disable copyright music option is turned on. Fixed an issue where hair didn't cast shadows when ray tracing was enabled. Players who pre ordered Phantom Liberty but didn't get the Quadra Sport R7 Vigilante will now receive it. Several improvements and changes to Ukrainian localization included fixes for lines where the uh, translation lost its original meaning. Okay, so on to Red Mod, and this is lastly, people. Fixed an issue where tweak mods would not compile in Red Mod and added Phantom Liberty support to Red Mod. And there we have it, guys. They are the changes arrived with patch 2.0. One. Tell me your thoughts down below guys, I mean the changes are pretty good and a lot of bugs here that I have seen and experienced myself. Hopefully when I jump back on now after this update is downloaded, all will be sorted. But guys if you did enjoy the video leaving a like really helps out, if you like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe and hopefully guys I will see you on that next one.